Hi, I'm Bob Alsop with Shop Saver CNC. Around here they call me Router Bob. We have a really neat video for you. We're going to be using the Shop Saber Sidekick Plasma Machine. Now we're going to make something that you've probably through the years seen made in many materials. And it's actually started as a 3D puzzle for kids. And it's a dinosaur. And I've seen them made many, many different sizes. But we're actually going to make one on the plasma out of plate steel. And it's really going to demonstrate a lot of capabilities this machine has. You know, this is also one of those products that's kind of a standalone product. Uh, you can make the entire product on your plasma machine. Before we do that, let's take a look at the machine we'll be using. The way a plasma machine actually works is real simple. You have a table surface, and this table actually incorporates some slats, which are sacrificial. They actually get burned up occasionally, and they're flexed into a radius to make them stiff, and that's what supports your material. Then the torch actually cuts the parts out. Now, we offer these tables in three configurations. The one you see here is a liquid table, and it's, it's the most popular. And the liquid that we have in here is actually a product we developed called Plasma Defense. We also offer these in a configuration with a downdraft table and also a blow-through table, depending on what your needs are. Now, let's look at the frame system that actually supports this table. You know, what really makes these machines cut so well is actually the frame itself. The table, of course, is supported by the frame, and let's talk about that a little bit. First off, this machine, as it's configured, weighs 2,100 pounds, and that's because the frame is made out of structural steel. So everything about this machine is really well done. One of the things I always notice is the wells on the machine frame that are on the inside that are not you typically don't see. They're just as good as what you see on the outside. And if you look at the finishing that we do on these, it's, it's, it's top notch. That tells you a whole lot about the company that's building this machine. Now, the other part of the frame system then is the gantry. It's also structural steel, and the uprights are structural steel. That's why these machines are so good. Now, let's talk about motion control a little bit. The real role of the motion control system is to actually convert those drawing shapes into machine motion that produces the parts. And we accomplish that by starting with precision contour guide rails in the X, Y, and Z axis. All right, we do that because that actually defines the movements in all three axes. What actually causes the components to move, in this case we're using ball screws in Z and in X. Now, the reason we have a ball screw in X is because this machine is a combo machine. It also gets a router head. Routing takes more accuracy, so we have to use a ball screw for that. If all you're going to do with the plasma is, is plasma stuff, then rack and pinion is fine. Now, we put a rack and pinion on the Y axis, and we have our exclusive floating drive system that we developed that basically reduces the maintenance required on the machine. Now, what finally makes it move are the motors. And we use a, the largest motors in our class because there's a huge impact on how fast it cuts parts. It's not so much how fast it cuts on a long mark, it's how fast it is going around tight geometry. That's where the real improvement in speed is. And the only way to do that is to have larger motors. Now, let's take a look at the, the brains of the control system, and that's the computer control system itself. We developed the ShopSaber Plasma Controller on a really robust control technology, and we did that because of reliability. But there's another part of machine control that has people involved, and that's the operator interface. And one of our goals when we designed this was to make a machine that was easy enough to use that a good employee could do it. It didn't have to be an engineering type employee. So we put everything on a, a single screen. So you run the entire machine from one screen. Now, there's a part of plasma program that's a little different than other things that we machine, and that is all the cutting controls are controlled in the controller, not in the program itself. Now, let me show you how we set that. We have a configuration button. And let's say that we have four or five different materials. So what we basically do is we can go to the chart that's actually loaded on the machine, and we can figure out for this particular material what the setting should be. Then we can go back here, and we can actually configure the materials that we use all the time. And then those appear on a drop-down menu. So when I'm getting ready to cut a material, I just select the material I'm going to use, and all the settings are done. So it's that simple. And we did that so the, the operator doesn't have to know that much about it. That's why we did that. Now, let's step forward. How do you run a program? Well, the first thing we do is we open the program. Once again, this is operating in a Windows interface, so we can be connected to the front office if we want to. I'll open the program. And the first thing that happens, it shows up. Watch what happens when I hit this little eyeball button. It actually shows on the screen what the cuts are going to be. And that's really, really important because that gives you visual validation that you loaded the correct program. Then once I've got that set, I'm happy with everything, I hit cycle start, and the program starts. That's all there is to it to run one of these machines. Now let's take a look at the torch. 
This machine features a Hypertherm PowerMax 45XP power supply and a Hypertherm torch. You know, something that's neat is we, it's a standard feature, it's a breakaway mount, so if you happen to collide with something, it knocks it out of the way instead of damaging the torch. Now here's when that happens. You're cutting a thicker material and maybe there's a scrap piece that falls down between the slats and it sticks up and the torch hits it. Now, this also is part of our system that, that actually gives us torch height control, and here's how we do that. We basically have, we feed information directly from the power supply into our machine control to monitor it, and that controls the height of the torch, and therefore that controls the accuracy of the parts you cut. Now that we've looked at the machine, let's go in and let's look at the software, and let's see if we can figure out how you make a dinosaur on a plasma machine. One of the things that really intrigues me about plasma is it gives you the ability to cut irregular shaped parts. You know, if you need to make straight pieces or things like that, there's a lot of ways to do it, metal. But when you get into curves, it's different. So I really wanted to select a demonstration that uh, had a lot of curves in it. And, and I wanted to make something that was a standalone product when we were finished. So that's why we chose the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Now, let me give you the background of where that all came from. About 20 years ago, that started as a kid's 3D puzzle. And I don't remember where we actually bought it, but it was a, just a small little puzzle with all these parts, and the child put it together, and it was, it was a Tyrannosaurus Rex, and there are a lot of different variations of that. So we got the idea that we could cut that in other materials, and so the process started by first digitizing each of those parts. Once we got those parts in space then, then we could nest them, put them on the sheet, and, and, and tool path them. And I've seen that dinosaur cut in wood, plastic, uh, aluminum, virtually any material you can cut it. So what we're going to do today is we're actually going to cut the dinosaur and plate steel using a plasma. Okay, we have a pretty good concept of the product that we want to produce, so let's see what steps are involved. Well, the first thing you want to do is determine what the material size is going to be, and we happen to have a piece of steel plate out in the shop that's 52 inches wide and 61 inches tall, so that's what we're going to make this out of. And then the next step is to scale the part sizes so that they fit on that sheet. And so basically what I did was I started nesting them and gradually increased the part sizes until it left one off and, and then backed up to the previous setting. That gives us the parts as large as we can make them and still fit on the sheet. So that's the first thing and that's really a scaling process. Now before we do anything else, then we have to adjust the, the slots because those parts all fit together with slots. So what we had to do is go in and, and draw, redraw each of those slots so that it was they were the material thickness plus a little bit of play in there. So that's what we have here. And so our goal when we finish with this is going to be this. When the machine's done, we're going to have those parts. But that's how I get it set up on the front end and how I get the sizes correct. Now let's look at the next stage, which is tool pathing. Okay, now once we've got our, everything scaled and our nest done and, and all the slots figured out right, now it's time to tool path. Now, in plasma, we actually just run the tool path and the actual cutting conditions are determined at the machine control. So all we really have to do is get the cut lines correctly. Now this is what it looks like. Let's take a quick look here. Basically, when we put it on the machine, we'll simulate this and you'll see it'll, it's just going to go from part to part. And when it gets completely through the program, we should have all of our parts. Now, Let's carry that a step further. This is actually what's going to happen in 3D. So the machine's going to go over there, and then it's going to cut a part out. So this should be what we see when we actually cut this on the machine. And of course, we can just keep, it'll go from part to part, and, and when, it's, when it's finished, we have a program ready to go to the machine. Now, let's take that program out to the machine, and let's go cut a dinosaur. <laughs>
our dinosaur parts came out really, really good. Let's take a look at one. You know, it just amazes me at how accurate this process is. The edges are beautiful, the curves are smooth, and you know, even on the back side, the dross or slag is really, really minimal, and that's because of our system that we have in the controller so that you get precise settings before you get ready to cut. All right, let's have the Shop Saber assembly team put this together, and I'll be right back. Our Tyrannosaurus Rex project on the sidekick really turned out nice. It's a beautiful demonstration of what you can do with a plasma. If you have any more questions, you can contact us at shopsaber.com. Thank you for watching.